Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Brilakis presenting case 248 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating use of a novel microcatheter called the MicroRx for treating a balloon and microcatheter uncrossable lesion. The patient was an elderly gentleman who presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction due to a severe lesion in a saphenous vein graft to the right coronary artery. The vein graft was uh, treated with balloon angioplasty only, without stent placement, and the patient was referred for recanalizing the native right coronary artery CTO. And the rationale here is that the patency of saphenous vein grafts that start failing, especially causing myocardial infarction, is low, and recanalizing the native vessel can provide superior short and long-term patency. This was the original angiogram when the patient presented with a severe lesion close to the distal anastomosis. And it is very important that there was no stent placed because if a stent is placed across the distal anastomosis of the saphenous vein graft, then going retrograde and recanalizing the native uh, coronary artery becomes much, much harder. So again, balloon angioplasty was done. There's some residual disease, but there's stimulatory flow into the PDA as well as into the right posterior lateral. So a few weeks later, the patient presented for recanalizing the native right coronary artery. For cases like this, we often use still bifemoral access for superior support because previous bypass patients can be very challenging to recanalize. We used uh, a AL1 guide to engage the right coronary artery and a multi-purpose guide to engage the saphenous vein graft to the PDA. There was no significant restenosis into the vein graft. What we can see here is that the native RCA is occluded distally, and then uh, there is a bifurcation of the PDA and the right posterior lateral at the distal cap, with the PDA filling through this saphenous vein graft. And this is just injection of the right coronary artery showing that the proximal cap has a tapered morphology. So tapered proximal cap, but clear. Length is about 40 millimeters. There is a bifurcation of the distal cap and uh, the PDA is filling through the vein graft. Our plan here was to first try with undergrade wiring since uh, the occlusion was not too long and the, there was a clear proximal cap, but if that didn't work, we had a low threshold to convert to retrograde through the saphenous vein graft. And the last one was ADR because of the presence of the bifurcation on the distal cap. So we started with a microcatheter, it was a Corsair, Fielder XT, um, Mongo. Uh, we did not really have much luck advancing further down into the vessel. We then did the Carlino technique, so we advanced the microcatheter as far as we could inside the occlusion, then injected a small amount, less than one cc of contrast. And now we can see that we can visualize the architecture of the vessel. After doing that, this might have changed the compliance, might have softened the proximal cap, and we were then able to advance a filter XT in knuckles and then advance towards the PDA PLB bifurcation, but unfortunately now we are extra plaque. And as we mentioned before, because of the bifurcation, we did not want to um, try to use a reentry because we were concerned we're going to lose one of the side branches. So the plan was to switch retrograde. We advanced a guide wire into the posterior lateral. We see here that the undergrade knuckle has advanced maybe a little too far into the posterior lateral, and we will see how this is important later on in the case. We then used a dual loop microcatheter, a Sasuki, trying to direct the retrograde guide wire towards the distal RCA. This is a Gaia next to, again, trying to make this bend across the bifurcation of the PDA in the right posterior lateral. And uh, we were then able to switch for a standard turnpike LP microcatheter. And then uh, we were able to direct a Gaia next to, next uh, to the undergrade guide wire. So we now know that we have a retrograde wire and an undergrade wire that are overlapping inside the occluded segment of the distal right coronary artery. So the next step is to advance uh, a microcatheter inside the RCA and then do reverse card. But the problem is nothing would go. 
and this is not uncommon in bypass patients. There is likely severe calcium here, and there's also a significant bend. So we tried the turnpike LP. It could not advance. We also tried a Sapphire 1.0 by 15, which is the lowest profile balloon available in the U.S., but this would also not advance. So what can we do next? And uh, this is the algorithm. When you have a balloon or microcatheter and cross collision, we start with a small balloon, which we did in this case with uh, uh, using the uh, Sapphire balloon. If it doesn't work, we rupture it, which we didn't do in this case. Then we try to use more support, although we did have fairly good support here, either with a guide extension. Then try a microcatheter, which the Turnpike LP did not work. The other option is to do wire cutting or puncture, which uh, requires advancing a second guide wire, which would have been difficult in our case. Or use laser, which would be another option. A therectomy, we would have to lose our position, and that's not optimal in the extra plug space. Or do subintimal techniques, uh, which again, here, it would be a problem because we might compromise one of the side branches. So what we ended up doing is using the micro RX, which is a caster. I've been fortunate to be involved in the testing of the caster, but it is a hybrid. It is a micro catheter, but does not go all the way back. It is uh, essentially a shortened micro caster that is a rod. And one way to think about it is like a guide extension equivalent for micro catheters. So the advantage of it is that it has a very low crossing profile. So it can be used as a monorail system to help with wiring through very stenotic or very tortuous lesions. But the second role is uh, to try to penetrate through balloon and microcatheter and crossable lesions. Because of the rod, there is a lot of pushability. And also because it doesn't have a hub at the back end, one can advance, if needed, a guide extension over it to increase further the support. So what we did here is we tried the micro RX. And uh, to our pleasant surprise, it actually crossed relatively easily. We can see it here crossing through the uh, distal RCA into um, the distal portion of the RCA. After doing that, then the Turnpike LP uh, also successfully crossed into the distal RCA. And now we have overlapping undergrade and retrograde guide wires. We advanced a guide extension to the mid RCA and did a guide extension reverse cart. And we were able to um, successfully advance the guide wire after some initial uh, failed attempts. But um, uh, again, using a big balloon, one can uh, make the two spaces match. And then eventually, uh, we were able to advance it back. This is actually the draft technique, where the balloon is deflated, and at the same time, the retrograde wire is being pushed. And that kind of creates a space for the retrograde wire to go into the undergrade guide extension. We then externalized an R350 guide wire, predilated. We then decided to stand all the way into the PDA, jailing the posterior lateral. However, we did have a guide wire coming from the vein graft into the posterior lateral for safety purposes. So we stand it all the way into the proximal RCA, and then we had good flow into the PDA, but unfortunately, we had poor flow into the right posterior lateral. And this is likely because we had advanced the undergrade knuckle wire uh, maybe a little too far into the right posterior lateral. So there is likely hematoma here that is compromising the lumen. So what to do? We used uh, the Sasuke to advance another guide wire into the right posterior lateral and then the balloon angioplasty. Sometimes actually just uh, using a cutting balloon can help with kind of draining the hematoma. That improved the flow into the posterior lateral, and then we decided to close the vein graft because there was a significant competitive flow. We used a long coil into the SVG, and uh, although the graft is not completely closed, when the decoagulation is um, gone, then this will close by itself. And in the end, we did have a nice result. The RCA is successfully recanalized into the PDA, and we have good flow also into the right posterior ladder. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that the retrograde approach can be a very effective way to maintaining patency of both branches when we have a bifurcation on the distal cap. We could have done a re-entry 
after the undergrade wire went extra plug into the posterior lateral, but that would risk uh, losing either the PDA or the posterior lateral. Second lesson has to do with balloon and microcatheter and crossable lesions. Here we were able to advance a micro RX and that created enough channel for the microcatheter to follow and allow us to complete the reverse card. Relevant to the first point, lesson number three is that when we advance an undergrade knuckle, we want to minimize how far down it goes to avoid compromising the patency of side branches. But if that happens and we have a hematoma, then balloon angioplasty alone, as in this case, or using a cutting balloon can help with restore flow and minimize the extra plaque hematoma. And finally, when there is a strong competitive flow through a saphenous vein graft into the native coronary artery after canalizing the native CTO, then occluding the saphenous vein graft can potentially help minimize the risk of stent thrombosis in the native coronary artery. Thank you.